All right, kids, here we are once again. My name is Mike Kelly for animatorsforum.com, and somebody on YouTube asked if I could do a uh, tutorial on fighting and hitting and punching and kicking. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't do that because uh, I believe in running away. Run away whenever a fight uh, takes place. Um, and, and our show is comedy, so we really... But but the, the idea is the characters interact with each other. I'm going to show you how... I've come to do it. I don't know that it's... It's certainly not the only way. Absolutely not the only way. Uh, I don't even know necessarily that it's the best way, but it's the way that I find uh, the easiest to deal with, if that makes sense. Um, first, let me talk in, in general about possibilities. You, get, you have characters, right? And your characters consist of a number of layers, possibly. They might only consist of one layer, but but let's assume in most cases there are a number of layers connected in a group, either usually a bone layer or a group layer. And you're all, I think, familiar with the concept of layers sitting atop each other or behind each other. So if you have two characters here, you really only have two possibilities. The character can be in front of this character or the character can be behind this character. Those are, those are the only two possibilities you have, right? Uh, so, uh, in order to have them interact, if this guy's going to throw a punch, he could throw it from this upstage arm, for example. He could take this arm here and punch this guy, and he can move this guy back, and I think you can understand how that would work. Uh, you would do it like the magician's sleight of hand, so as he, you know, and actually like they used to do it in the movies. In the movies, when they really used to do fight scenes, they never really touched each other. They just came close, and, it, and the idea was, oh, well, yeah, you know, I got punched. So you could do it here. You could come close and this guy could go backwards and react to it and it would look as if they're... But in reality, what we're talking about is characters that both go in front and behind. So for example, I'm going to have these two characters hug each other. And in a hug, uh, this character has to be both on top because this arm has to... I mean, he's going to go on top of this arm, this upper arm. And then he also has to be behind because this arm has to come in front of him, if you can imagine that, as you'll see in a hug. As a matter of fact, well, I'll show you. There's, here's the hug. So as he looks in here, and so there's the hug. So you can see this character here is in front of this character, but he's also got his other arm behind this character. And this character here is uh, behind this character because they've got <laughs> getting junk mail here. So he's got his arm is behind the character, but he's also in front of this other arm here. So the question is, and that's the similar case in, in terms of, of fighting, is, is how you would do it, is, is how, do you, how do you get that to, to happen? And, and uh, here's what it actually looks like in an actual animation I want to show you. Okay, so once again, this is, this is like uh, magician tricks time, is that it's, it's tricks. The first thing I do is I set up the animation. And when I set up the animation, I'm going to turn off a couple of these things here so you can see. Whoops, I'll turn that off. When I set up the animation first. I have the characters go through their motions and just do their thing. You notice the scientist character, his hand is behind on both sides. That's because he can only be behind this character. He can't be behind or in front. It's impossible. He can't be both at the same time. And the jester is obviously on top. And notice he's missing an arm. Well, the reason for that is, I'll bring it here. After I've done all the animation, then I go through and I duplicate the characters. So some of you are probably already way ahead of me. So, uh, for example, the scientist I duplicate, so scientist 2. And what I do in the scientist 2 is I hide everything but that upstage uh, forearm and bicep. And, and actually, depending upon how much he's going to actually be around, you can hide more or less, uh, you know, things that you need to hide. But in, in essence, what that means is I have one scientist, the scientist, the regular scientist, one here, who's in front of the jester, and I have his his arm, basically, his, uh, his arm that's, that's here, this downstage arm, is going to be... I'm sorry, let me start over here. I have one... The scientist here is behind the jester, and then the scientist one, his arm, and arm only, is in front of the jester. So his arm comes through and, and is in front. Now, the jester is exactly the opposite. So I have a jester who's behind the character, and that's why he has that arm there. And, uh, and then the other part of the jester, this, this jester, jester here, his, uh, his 
where is he here? His, you can see his upper arm is all hidden because that's the, up, the part that's going, if, he, if his upper arm was there, then it would go in front of this scientist. And I don't want it to go in front of the scientist. So, so that's how I do it. So basically, I, I did, it's just faked. And if you examine it really closely, uh, you know, if you, if you run it in real time, you, you really don't notice too much. But if you examine it really closely, you can see, see, the scientist's arm is actually going in between there. And if I was going to do this correctly, um, I, I probably want to hide this arm prior to that. So, and we've, we've been through visibility on the ball layers, so you guys all know how that works. I could set these keys to be visible or, or invisible. So uh, this particular, uh, I'm sorry, wrong segment. This particular segment of this scientist here, I could uh, make these upper forearm, actually I would probably only need to do that part, make this invisible. And uh, and and as we as we go to hug, he would he would they would disappear. But uh, it it just involves fakery and trickery, and basically that's what you do. And when like I say, when it operates quickly, and you're uh, I already I already got rid of the animation, but uh, you saw the animation when it when it operates in real time quickly, you you don't really notice all the differences to it. But um, that's how I would do it. And the same principles involve involve in punching. You know, if you're gonna have kicks or arms or legs, you do the same thing. But what, the thing you want to do is set up your animation first, because when you dupe the layers, it'll copy all that animation. And the problem is, if you have to go in later and try to recreate that, it's just impossible. So you, you basically would end up uh, you know, having to do it all over again. So I say, work with the two characters, animate it as just as if they were going to be intermingled and then you go ahead and duplicate them and intermingle them and then i guess it's possible you know this arm's here i suppose it's possible that you could have this leg in front of the gesture i don't know all kinds of different things but um so you might end up with more than more than one layer more maybe three scientist copies of it it's all possible so anyway that's how i would do it uh hopefully that's helpful and we'll see you around the forums